So, hello everyone. Hello. My name is Michal. Uh, not Michel, please. I'm not a friend of, of French origin. You can call me Michael if you want. And uh, I got a mic. Thanks. Yeah. If you want to move around, you should. Better now? Or just for recording? Okay. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I'm a web developer. Any web developers around? Who's developing stuff and signing, sign up, signing? Just you. <laughs> cool. So, uh, uh, yeah, something about me. I was working as a developer since, say, 2000. I was working for Skype last five and a half years, and now I'm taking a sabbatical. And uh, I would like to show you some uh, some stuff. You know, there has been a lot of talks about uh, data leaks and, uh, and hacks around uh, Rocky and LinkedIn and stuff like this. But there is also a small hacks every day going on, and there is also a small data leaks which could actually put a lot of users of the website into into the danger. So I would like to show you really poor man hacking things using just a web browser, nothing else. Uh, which actually is kind of interesting, at least for me, because you don't need any, any special hardware, nothing else. So, uh, let's go on. Uh, there is a small website in, uh, in Czech Republic, uh, which is actually a uh, retail store. They don't, they don't sell much online, they just do mainly offline stuff. I mean, they just have stores, physical stores, and uh, they are selling outdoor wear. It's this website. And uh, last year I was hired to do uh, reviews of some websites for some competition. I was not doing any review of, of the security stuff. I was not just hired to review this website. I got a list of websites and I should score them. And I have to score them. Uh, I was also checking some small details like uh, robots takes there, uh, files missing, if it's missing or not. And some of the files actually they revealed a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, this website, uh, the robot that takes the file was uh, actually consisting of this, these lines. Um, so I said, oh, let's have a look at these, these characters. <laughs> <laughs> they were all really interesting. The most interesting one was the 10th one, of course. Uh, the Atom. Atom is actually the, the company who did the website. So they got some temporary stuff there. And one of the files, that was funny, one of the files was actually a dump of the database. So, <laughs> you know, I got some data and I didn't even need to hack them. It was kind of legal, almost legal. So, uh, in, the, in the database now, there were like, uh, it, it was a really small database, probably nobody's buying online on the website, but still, there was like 300 uh, something usernames, including their emails, including their passwords, and some uh, versus history and stuff like this. Uh, the password, somebody tried to, to hide them. But uh, they used uh, the secure hash algorithm, show one, uh, but with no solve. I said, ah, okay, but well, I was too lazy, really too lazy. I didn't want to download hash I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted the passwords, nothing else. So I said, okay, there must be some online tool which can actually, you know, crack them online for me. So I googled a bit for a while and found this breakstation, breakstation.net. Um, uh, anyone know around? Anyone around knows this one? Yes, of course. Cool. So uh, they are using, they are doing the dictionary attacks online. So you just input some hashes there. They got a capture there so that you can actually load all your hashes uh, at once. You just need to go by by the batches of ten. So I just used this tool because I was really lazy. It was uh, Sunday afternoon. And I was like, okay, I don't need to download anything. You just uh, took the hashes, uh, took a, use this online tool, and uh, what I got was actually really. Really nice. I got 111 correct passwords out of only out of this workstation uh, They are using some really deep dictionaries. They say that they are using some 190 gigabytes of, of text actually for MP5 and for Show One. So I got 111 correct passwords out of 300 uh, user accounts just you know in half an hour or so. So that was kind of kind of cool. Uh, some of the passwords which were given which were correct. Which were coming out of the conversation that meant were these ones. Uh, you know, these are not really words except the last one. This is a village somewhere in Czech Republic in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so if you if you look at these words, this is not a dictionary anymore. 
if you see like B1 double L3D, uh, I'm not really sure if that's a word in any language in, in the world. Uh, and probably this password is also like, you know, we've got six, six characters, it's got uh, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, it's got some numbers, so probably it will validate at some website. And, and it's actually in the dictionary. So uh, I said, okay, I got some passwords, now what? So I said, okay, some of the emails, uh, probably people are using the passwords. So let's try it. I just wanted to see the number of actually if people are really doing that. So I said, uh, let's try it. There is a website which is called SaysNumber.cz. SaysNumber is like a list in English. And uh, uh, that is kind of popular in Czech Republic. It's probably more popular than Google, which is kind of interesting. It's probably the only country where uh, Google is not the most popular one. Uh, it's something like Yandex in Russia, something like that. So it's a kind of big website where they are offering uh, search, they are offering emails and stuff like this. Just like Google, but it's not Google. Uh, so I said, okay, let's try that. Uh, out of these 111 correct passwords, uh, 52 were for the uh, for the users, which got the email set for this says number to see the website. So I tried to log in into every single one of them. I do it manually because I didn't want to write anything. I just said, okay, let's just copy paste the passwords and let's see. Uh, and uh, I got some passwords. Uh, I got into some of the email boxes. Any guess? How much? Or is the how many? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Uh, no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Any any other guess? Thirty. Okay, who thinks that it was less than ten? Okay, me. Because it was nine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was just nine, but uh, it's still it's still uh, probably nine more than it should be. Right? So I said. Okay, we got nine passwords for the uh, for the uh, for the only website for the only service. But I also tried some other services. Email the Caesar. Uh, they are offering some email stuff and sent to the Caesar as well. So uh, these numbers were, you see, two uh, two successful logins out of nine. And uh, the I also got one Gmail account out of fifteen. That was kind of interesting because uh, I was using Tor, so that they don't detect my my original IP. And Google detected that, hey, yeah, you are trying to sign in from a really unusual location. So give us something more than just your password and username. They wanted a phone number of that guy who I was trying to log in for. <laughs> but I didn't know that, of course. So I said, hey, Google, maybe you know that already, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I just took the email, gave it to Google, and he gave me the, the, the phone number. So why the hell he wants it if he already knows that? <laughs> so this was really pointless, but yeah, so this was still a successful game for Gmail. Uh, sometime after, yeah, I, ver I re-verified all these passwords like six months later, because this was already some time ago. I re-verified all these passwords sometime later, six months later, like last week, and actually none of these guys has changed the password, which is really strange. Because actually, I remember that I was uh, that I notified the company who built the website uh, that I told them that hey, you should probably reset the passwords for your for our users. <coughs> we just uh, didn't tell them. Yeah. Was there any sort of notification to those users that they need? Yeah, I told I told the company who built the website that they should probably tell their, their, their customers or their users that they should change it. But uh, did that occur? Huh? Did that actually occur? That's a good question. <laughs> I probably know the answer, and it's, it's not. If they were not really happy that I told them, uh, but probably they didn't tell that tell, tell the users for some reason. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I also tried to use. Yeah, last week I said also we got the passwords for some some users, and I said okay, let's try some more advanced techniques than just the browser. So I downloaded this hashcat tool. You know that, right? I guess. <laughs> And I didn't have any special hardware, I just really, I had the laptop and I didn't want to, you know, buy all the GPUs and stuff like this. So I said, okay, let's try it really on my like, commodity hardware, let's just try it at home on a simple laptop. It was some Lenovo X220 something. So I just ran the HCAD, you know, it doesn't have any graphic card, so it was just some Intel built in something. But still I got 160 more passwords out of the HCAD, which was running for a week or so. I didn't need the laptop. So I said, okay, let's just leave it running here. I disabled the power savings mode and everything, so it was actually working as a heater in my, in my place. <laughs> um, 
So I got 160 more passwords, but only two of them were actually reused for the email doses. Uh, I was kind of sad, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking about how we developers can actually, you know, tell the users that they shouldn't reuse the password. And I got the idea. If you look at this uh, uh, sign-up page, you know, Twitter. Right? So this is for Twitter, and uh, just look at the look at the forum. Uh, they're asking for your full name, for email and password. Maybe some of the users think that the password is not the new password that they should invent at the time, but maybe they think that, okay, they want my email and they want my password for the email, because it says that, right? This is email and password. So probably my mother or my father wouldn't do that, but I guess that many of the other users would just put uh, their password for the email because that's what they are asking for. So maybe we as developers should somehow change the way, or the designers should somehow change the way of the forms so it asks for the new password, not the password for the email. Maybe. I don't have any numbers because it's just like, you know, I really don't know. Uh, well, maybe you should try it. Uh, so I think that's a small exercise, but since you are not developers, then uh, it might not be as successful as last time I was doing this presentation. Um, I think that uh, half of the developers, they are actually storing the passwords in a really wrong way. And, you know, which one? Which, which half? Which of you? So I got the exercise that <laughs> right now each of you turn your head right, and that's the guy who is storing the password in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since you're not the developer, then it might not be as good as, uh, as the last time. So and if you are sitting at the, at the end, you just turn your head around. So, uh, we are talking about storing your passwords in a, in a bad way in the big pages. So, uh, which one are the bad ways? One of them is uh, in the read of the form. And, you know, it's the simplest thing because you just store the password which you get from the, from, from the form and just put it in the database and then you just compare it. And it's really simple. You don't need to care about hashes because you are not hashing anything. You can't actually use the wrong hashing method because you are not using any method for hashing passwords. So it's really simple, it's really nice. And if you actually want to log in for, you know, you get a request for customer support and you want to log in as some different user because they got some issues, so you just read the password from the database and you just log in as that user. And it's kind of nice. But no, just that's not really a good idea. <laughs> there are some better ideas uh, out of these ones. Um, some of the users have seen the idea uh, in, the, in, the, in, the initial, uh, in the initial case that they are, they probably they heard about some hashing. So they are trying to use some MD5 or uh, CRC32 stuff for hashing passwords. And uh, this is good for you know verifying the integrity of the DVD uh, your friend has sent to you over the internet. If it's got all the frames correct or if the pixel in the right corner is actually correct or not. Um, so these also aren't really good things for hashing passwords as you have seen in the, in the initial case. Um, also, if you're just lazy and you don't know about any online tracking stuff, like the track station, you just uh, uh, take the hash and you just give it to Google, and sometimes <laughs> Google will just give it passwords right in the search page, or in the, in, the, in, the, in the listings. You just don't need to even go to that side. You just get it right in that, in, that, uh, in that page. So that's also one way of cracking passwords using Google. Um, but there are some other guys who are doing it in a more advanced <laughs> 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 Do you have rights to use that? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why they got some so many GPUs there, probably it's you know hardcore gaming or something. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they don't start. <laughs> Someone follows. They just got more GPUs. That's nice, that's cool. Um, that was a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have any access to the online tools or like workstation, just build your own. <laughs> okay, so there's another way of doing something. You know, multiple hashing. You can just write it like this, right? It's just a copy paste, but it's also not really a really good idea. So no, no, just don't do it this way. Because you would probably need like several hundred times to hash the password and, and because MD5 and all the hashes are actually quite fast. So even if you just do it like you know 20 times, it doesn't really help. So uh, one of the rules is that we need really slow hashing function. Not that slow, I mean slightly faster than this, but slow hashing function. Um, 
also, uh, probably some of the developers have heard about some salt. Uh, they say that, okay, we just put the salt there into the password and just hash it using MD5 or show one, uh, and it should be better. But uh, uh, n no, also, because uh, this actually, the salt doesn't actually you know, slow down the hashing speed. If you use brute force, it's, it's still the same speed. So, uh, salt is for something else, just for if you find one hash in the database for the user, and some other users have the same password, so they have a different hash. Uh, that's what solves for. Uh, so maybe there are some other things like this hash message something something something. Uh, that should be slightly slower because you use slower hashing function, you use salt, so it might look like a great idea. But uh, maybe some of you guys are thinking that it should be okay, but I actually haven't seen this one uh, using the, this hash message something. So uh, now also it's not a great idea. Uh, one of the greatest, greatest uh, hashing algorithms is uh, Bluefish hashing, I guess. <laughs> because the uh, thing with this algorithm is that it's kind of slow, or uh, you can actually set the speed for this algorithm so that uh, it scales with your with your hardware if you buy new servers. You just uh, you just make it slower slightly, and still the old hashes will still work. And the only problem with Bluefish hashing in PHP, for example, is that uh, you know try to hash it with uh, function which is uh, called grip, it's not really straightforward. So, and also, if you want to hash using uh, low pay hashing, using this function, you just need to do some black magic and start the salt with this uh, dollar sign to y dollar something something. So, it's not really straightforward. So, that's probably the reason why nobody in PHP is doing that. Uh, and also, there are some other, there are more characters. You can use 2a and 2x. Uh, so in BHP there are more ways of uh, using this uh, blowfish grip, the blowfish hashing, and just this one is uh, right because they have screwed up something. So 2A and 2X are not really great ones as well. Uh, in PHP 5.5 there are finally, after you know 20 years of PHP in the world, there are finally some nice functions for doing you know, password hashing and password refining. Finally, it's called password hash because it's for hashing passwords. And password verify because it's for verifying hashes. So finally, and they are actually, you don't need to specify any, any, any hashing algorithms, nothing, nothing like that. It just uses uh, low fish hashing as a predefined algorithm, which is really nice. Um, so finally, in 2013, we get something like uh, Also, you can use uh, S script and uh, this pvkdf2, uh, but in PHP, it, that's a real problem. Because uh, Escape is not really implemented in PHP, there is some extension, but uh, nobody knows if uh, it doesn't have any timing effect issues. Um, and PBKDF2, it's in the PHP 5.5, finally. But if you got low finishing there, I'm not really sure why would you use that. Uh, so probably I would use Escape if there would be available in PHP, like uh, natively, without any extension, without any uh, timing issues. And then, and then this backgrid uh, and then PBK you have to pay it. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, storing a password or hashing them or hashing passwords, uh, it's not the only important thing. Because if you store the passwords into the database in the, in the correct form, in the, they are hashed and they are hashed using slow functions and everything, but if you can uh, sign in using uh, Using the username, which is uh, apostrophe or one or something like that. You know, if you got the SQL injection in the website, uh, it doesn't really matter how the passwords are stored. So uh, it's not just about storing passwords, and also it's not just about logging using uh, SQL injection. Your website would be perfectly protected, and but uh, if you, for example, serve your login forms over the HTTP, not the HTTPS, that might also create some issues. You might. Uh, the website could be perfectly secure. You can use uh, slow hashing algorithms and uh, stuff like this for the passwords. But if you serve your login forms or if you submit your forms over plain HTTP, then you might have some issues as well. So there might be some guy next door who is trying to eavesdrop on your connections. So they will get your passwords as well. Uh, so uh, passwords should be submitted over HTTPS, but also the login forms should be loaded over HTTPS. Um, 
just because you know if you load the bus, if you load the login form for HTTP, then uh, you are not really sure which form are you loading to your browser. And yep. Also, I have seen a lot of uh, some guys who are trying to send the password after registration over email. Uh, they might be storing the passwords correctly, hashing them, and they might be websites could be perfectly secure, but they just send you the password over email or via email if you register or if you even reset the password. And that's also nice because you know the password isn't traveling over the internet in the plain text and all of this probably most of the mail servers are not really encrypted in the world. Uh, so uh, that's just not really a good idea. Just don't send the password if the people are trying to register at your website or even if they are resetting the password. Um, yeah, and if you are resetting the password for them, just um, <laughs> just don't send them or just don't generate them any password and don't send them by email. Don't send the password by email to the users because that's like uh, also you generate a random password and you so you send it over internet, uh, which is not really encrypted. It's stored somewhere in the in the, in the email clients and it's stored in the Google clients and anywhere in the world. So even if you wish it correctly. Can store it correctly. Your, your website is protected. No, no, no vulnerabilities. Then uh, still you get the issue if you send it over uh, over the email. So mm, I guess that's uh, enough from me. I'm still at the time limit. So if you get any questions, you can ask me or you can just find me email, uh, or tweet me or do whatever you want. So if you got any questions, just uh, you can ask me. Hmm? Um, I was just wondering, you know, it's not a huge sample, so we don't yep. know, but I found it interesting that the passwords that were the easiest to crack mm -hmm. were the most likely to be reused. Now uh, you mean, yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Uh, <coughs> where is this? You mean this, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. You know, so the ones that you actually had to use yeah. Yeah. Were also the ones that were less. Yeah, good. that was quite interesting for me as well. I was like, why, why the hell I was running for a week? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. What needs to happen for uh, bcrypt, uh, scrypt, bbk, df2 to become more easily used by developers, not just with PHP? But other um, the issue in the PHP was probably that uh, you know if you wanted to hash a password and you were looking in the, in, the, in the documentation for password hashing something like that, you couldn't even find a function for it. PHP's got a function for everything, right? Except password hashing. Until now. And so how does that compare with other languages like Ruby or Python? You know, uh, probably. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know much. Is, so what needs to happen? <coughs> Just to be like a standard yeah. uh, part of the library. Mm. Probably we should drop all the tutorials which were written until now <laughs> and rewrite them because all of them are, are, are talking about MD5 without salt or show on without salt. So probably these tutorials need to be dropped. We just should erase all the internet to start again. <laughs> <laughs> we need to share Google's cache. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. A maximum of filters. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I don't know, probably more like, uh, you know, talking about why it's important, that's, why, that's what I'm trying to do, just show the examples, why it's so easy to actually crack the passwords. And even if it's a small sample, it's like 100 users, then it's really important because some of your friends, because it's a local website and I got my friends and some of my friends might have friends, which I have a password for them right now, so that's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. yep. do you think that encouraging web developers so we know can't create or store passwords correctly or something? Uh, anyway, you think encouraging them to use federated login services would be a way forward? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Okay. But somebody needs to write that login services to right? Just as we don't write our own encryption algorithms, not writing our own authentication frameworks. Yeah. I would think that it's probably better because you don't need to care about you know logging and everything that's your own or it's your local side or you don't have the issues yourself. But you're actually trying to delegate the issues to someone else. So your users might be a danger as well because you are trying to use third-party services with everything which comes with it. Yeah. So that might be the issue as well. 
But if you don't know, if the, if the web developers don't know how to correctly write the, the hashing functions or something, they probably should better you know, use the other services. Okay, well, thank you to the colleague. Okay.